everyone. So today we are going to see about blood pressure and this topic is divided into two parts in which today's video we are going to see about the terminologies, the factors affecting the blood pressure, the variation of blood pressure and the pathological variations of blood pressure. Whereas in the second part we are going to see about how this blood pressure is being regulated. So let's get into today's video. First, terminologies. Okay. Okay. Okay, what's blood pressure? What's the definition of blood pressure? So it's the lateral pressure exerted by the flowing blood on the walls of the vessel. Yeah, so we have a blood vessel with blood flowing in that. Yeah, yeah. we have a blood vessel Yeah, with blood flowing in that. Yeah, so this, the blood, okay, the blood exerts some force yeah some pressure on the blood vessel wall yeah so this this pressure here is being termed as the blood pressure yeah okay so when we term blood pressure in general we it can be arterial pressure venous pressure or capillary pressure but what does blood pressure here means yeah it is the arterial pressure so when we term the when we term blood pressure it ultimately means the arterial pressure so what is the normal range or normal value of the blood pressure? So generally, for blood pressure, it doesn't have a normal value. We always have a normal range. But the average of the normal range is around 120 by 90 millimeter mercury. Here this 120 corresponds to the systolic blood pressure and the 90 corresponds to the diastolic blood pressure. Yeah. So we'll see about what is systolic blood pressure and diastolic blood pressure next. Okay, systolic blood pressure. What is systolic blood pressure? Systolic blood pressure is the maximum arterial pressure that I mean that is being recorded during systole. Okay, okay. When does the systole occur? And particularly bad. So this occurs during the ventricular ejection. So systole. Okay, systole is the contraction, right? So when the ventricle contracts, okay. There occurs systole ventricular systole, and when we record the blood pressure at that time, that is called the systolic blood pressure. So, the systolic blood pressure is the function of the cardiac output, that is, it determines the extent of the work done by the heart. Okay, so the normal systolic blood pressure ranges from 105 to 135 millimeter of mercury in a young adult. Okay, next is the diastolic blood pressure. So it is the minimum arterial pressure that is being recorded during the diastole. Okay, when does this occur? This occur just before the onset of the ventricular ejection. So this is the function of the total peripheral resistance. Okay, and the normal range is around 60 to 90 millimeter of mercury in an in adult. Okay, the next is the pulse pressure. So the pulse pressure is the difference between the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. Okay, so what is the average pulse pressure here? SBP minus BBP, okay. Uh, it's around 40 millimeter of mercury. So this pulse pressure determines the pulse volume, okay. And this pulse pressure is dependent or it, uh, I mean, it is interlinked with these three factors. What are the arterial volume, the stroke volume, and the elastic content of the artery through which the blood is flowing through. Okay, the next is the mean arterial blood pressure. So mean is nothing but the average of the blood pressure, right? So average of all the blood pressure is called the mean arterial blood pressure. So it should be SBP plus BBP by two, right? But that's not the case here. Why? Why is it not SBP plus BBP by two? Because systole, the duration of systole is comparatively lesser than that of the diastole. So it's not SBP plus BBP by two. Instead, it is a sum of diastolic blood pressure plus one by third of the pulse pressure. Okay. Now, this uh, mean arterial blood pressure determines the pressure head. Okay. So, what is that here? I mean, the blood flow through a particular organ depends upon this pressure head. The normal value, I mean, the normal range of the mean arterial blood pressure is around 90 to 100 millimeter of mercury. Okay. This sums up the terminologies of blood pressure. So when they ask blood pressure in an essay, and if they ask, the question is uh, defined blood pressure, we are supposed to write all these terminologies, okay? 
Now, let's come to the factors that affects the blood pressure. Okay, before that, let's get into detail. What is blood pressure? It's a cardiac output. I mean, it's a product of cardiac output and peripheral resistance. Okay, so any factor that influences the cardiac output and peripheral resistance ultimately affects the blood pressure too. Okay, so the, okay, first thing is the I mean, factors that affect the cardiac output. Okay, so any change in the cardiac output that is uh, change in the cardiac output okay results in system. I mean, the change in cardiac output could be seen more in the systolic blood pressure than in the diastolic blood pressure. Whereas any change in the peripheral resistance uh, will be more pronounced in diastolic blood pressure than the systolic blood pressure. Okay, now. Now let's get into the factors that affect the blood pressure. The first one is the heart rate. Okay, so increase in heart rate leads to increase in cardiac output. So ultimately, it causes increased in blood pressure. Okay, whereas the vice versa occurs. Decrease in heart rate decreases the cardiac output, decreases the blood pressure. Okay. Now the increase in heart rate ultimately leads to increased systolic blood pressure than that of the diastolic blood pressure because the cardiac output is being the main factor. Uh, affected here okay the next is the stroke volume now the stroke volume increases when the stroke volume increases it increases the cardiac output as well so the arterial pressure is also being increased but when the stroke volume decreases the cardiac output decreases so the blood pressure also decreases the next is the arterial elastic content okay so elasticity of the blood okay elasticity of the blood vessel means the blood vessel can contract and stretch right so, with increased arterial elastic constant, or uh, like, uh, let's, I mean, let me put it in other words. With loss of elasticity of the blood vessel wall, okay, with the vessel wall, when does it occur? As a person ages, right? So, the pressure increases in case of, uh, I mean, increased arterial elastic constant or decreased elasticity of the vessel wall, okay? So, uh, the arterial blood vessel, I mean, uh, this increased arterial elastic constant, constant uh, particularly have influence on the systolic blood pressure. So, it, it ultimately leads to increased systolic blood pressure. So, the, in that case, we term that as systolic hypertension. Okay. Now, what's the next factor? It's the arterial blood volume. So, increase in blood volume ultimately increases both the systolic and the diastolic blood pressure. Okay. The next is the peripheral resistance, okay. So, increase in peripheral resistance increases the blood pressure, increase in, I mean, decrease in peripheral resistance decreases the blood pressure. Now, let's see the variations in the blood pressure, okay. So, the first thing here is the age, age of an individual. This has a major role, okay. So, blood pressure varies in an infant, okay. Uh, at birth and in a uh, one month year, I mean one month old baby, in an adult, in an adolescent, okay, so it varies in various ages. So let's see how. At birth, okay, at birth, the systolic blood pressure is around 40 millimeter of mercury. That, I mean the range is 20 to 60 millimeter of mercury. Okay, from birth till one month, the blood pressure increases rapidly. Okay, then after one month, okay it increases slowly i mean the blood pressure increase is not i mean it's not as rapid as that occurred uh, before one month okay so what is the systolic blood pressure here it's around 80 millimeter of mercury then uh, up to 17 years of age or uh, from adolescent okay from adolescent uh, till 40 years of age the blood pressure is being maintained at a normal range that is 120 uh, about 80 millimeter of mercury okay and then after 40 years the blood pressure increases i mean it rises very slowly okay and around 70 years of age the blood pressure uh, i mean it is uh, the average blood pressure will be around 170 to i mean uh, 90 millimeter of mercury why is that it's because of the decreased elasticity elasticity of the blood vessel okay now let's get into the next variant. It's the sex. Okay. So the females generally have lesser blood pressure than male of the same age group. But this factor, okay, the sex 
as insulin and blood pressure in females only before menopause why because of the influence of estrogen the blood pressure is i mean the systolic blood pressure is 4 to 6 mm mercury lower than that of the males of the same age group but after menopause the females usually have the same blood pressure or slightly higher than the same i mean uh, blood pressure of the males of the same age group the next is the effect of meals after food intake or after meal the blood pressure particularly the systolic blood pressure increases by around 4 to 6 mm of mercury okay why is this because uh, after meal our abdomen is becoming distended that has some effect on heart so that leads to increased heart rate so increased heart rate leads to increased cardiac output increased cardiac output leads to increased blood pressure okay added to that we also have sympathetic discharge okay that also results in increased blood pressure after meals the next is the emotions okay uh, emotions like excitement okay fear okay these things increases the systolic blood pressure okay but as like calm when we are very calm the blood pressure has no changes the next is the climatic temperature okay so in cold regions okay the blood pressure is increased and in hot temperature the blood pressure is decreased okay it is due to the vasodilation during hot temperature the next is the diurnal variation so the blood pressure shows a diurnal variation of around 5 to 10 mm of mercury okay so the values of the blood pressure are being lower okay lower at the morning and it is higher at the uh, afternoon but the diurnal variation can be vice versa or reversed in case of night workers or night shift workers okay then okay then exercise exercise plays a major role in blood pressure so in heavy exercise or muscular exercises the systolic blood pressure increases and the diastolic blood pressure falls okay then effect of gravity so the effect of gravity can be divided into two parts okay so we have a heart here right heart above the heart we have certain blood vessels and below the heart we have certain blood vessels so the blood vessels uh, i mean the blood vessels above the heart okay the blood vessel above the heart uh, because of the gravity the pressure increases there okay and the blood vessels below the heart because of gravity the blood pressure decreases here because of venous pooling okay okay the next is the effect of change in posture okay so uh, when i okay i'm sitting and i'm suddenly standing i'm changing my posture from sitting to standing position okay so there occurs a change in my blood pressure there occurs a fluctuation in my blood pressure okay so there will be a fall in my blood pressure but that blood pressure is uh, for a very minute Time or for a very small amount of time, because a body has many reflexes, reflex. Okay, so that immediately rectifies the change in the blood pressure. Okay, so when I stand immediately from a sitting position or lying position, my systolic blood pressure falls. Next is sleep. A peaceful sleep. Okay, a peaceful sleep leads to. Uh, I mean, uh, there will be a fall in blood pressure by around fifteen to twenty millimeter of mercury, but. during un, i mean very disturbed sleep we will be having uh, increased blood pressure because of increased sympathetic activity the next is the body weight obese person usually have higher blood pressure than a thin or lean person okay now let's come into the pathological variations okay okay now a uh, hypertension okay so what is hypertension when the blood pressure is above uh, the normal range it's termed as hypertension so hypertension here refers to a condition in which the value of systolic blood pressure is persistently more than 140 mm of mercury or the diastolic blood pressure is more than 90 mm of mercury okay so when the systolic blood pressure is alarm increased it's called as systolic hypertension okay now what are the types of hypertension we have two types one is the primary hypertension and the other is the secondary hypertension the primary hypertension is also termed as the essential hypertension now let's see each of these in detail 
primary hypertension okay why is it named as primary because it is not due to any underlying disease okay so it itself raises okay the risk factors i mean there might be risk factors but it is not due to any diseases that results in hypertension so what are the risk factors here uh, it may be obesity mental tension smoking okay all these things might be the risk factor so here the blood pressure increase i mean the rise in blood pressure is mainly due to the increase in the peripheral systems okay so the primary hypertension is further divided into benign hypertension and malignant hypertension so benign hypertension so here the blood pressure is moderately rise that is if the range i mean is the maximum range of the blood pressure that is supposed to be normal is around 140 uh, now in benign hypertension my blood pressure will be around 145 Okay, maximum to the max it would be around one fifty millimeter of mercury. Okay, but if this benign hypertension is left untreated, it might lead to severe complications. Like it might lead to cardiac and renal complications. Okay, in malignant hypertension or accelerated hypertension, the blood pressure will be increased suddenly, and there will be a marked rise in blood pressure. That is, my blood pressure might even rise up to two sixty or two seventy millimeter of mercury. I mean, my systolic blood pressure. Okay. this condition is termed as an emergency condition and it might sometimes me i even be fatal okay now the next thing is secondary hypertension so the secondary hypertension is due to any underlying disease so the underlying disease i mean the causes might be cardiovascular disease renal endocrine neurological and pregnancy induced hypertension we we'll see them one by one now so cardiovascular disease so uh, atherosclerosis and coagulation of aorta these things might increase the blood pressure yeah the next one is the renal disease so in case of stenosis of the renal artery or glomerulonephritis or a tumor of the juxta glomerular cells so this juxta glomerular cells secretes renin which increases the blood pressure so there uh, when there occurs a tumor in the juxta glomerular cells the renin secretion will be increased which ultimately leads to increased blood pressure yeah the next is the a uh, endocrinal disorders okay uh, they might it might be cushing syndrome which is uh, increased glucocorticoid secretion from the adrenal cortex or hyperaldosteronism which might be increased secretion of aldosterone uh, okay what is aldosterone do here aldosterone causes sodium and water retention which increases the blood volume when blood volume is increased the cardiac output is increased cardiac output is increased the blood pressure is being increased okay the next is uh, Uh, like uh, phacromocytoma, which is a tumor of the adrenal medulla, so which causes increased secretion of adrenaline, noradrenaline, so increase in pancreatic discharge is being seen. Okay, the next is the uh, pill hypertension. Okay, so some contraceptive pills contains higher amount of estrogen. Okay, so this estrogen, okay, this results in increased secretion of angiotensinogen, which results in the formation of angiotensin two. which ultimately leads to increased level of aldosterone okay thus increasing the blood pressure the next is the neurological disorders okay neurological disorders like increased intracranial pressure uh, and uh, like uh, uh, what so what can i say is hypo uh, pituitarism yeah i mean hyperpituitarism yeah hyperpituitarism things like that causes secondary hypertension okay the next is the pregnancy induced hypertension so this is being uh, seen in around every 5 to 10% of the expectant mothers okay so it might uh, i mean it might lead to hypertension in pregnant mother may lead to pre eclampsia okay uh, which is also known as the toxemia of pregnancy okay now what the okay here this thing determines the benign and the malignant hypertension see benign is slightly elevated level okay malignant is a very high end level okay what are the changes that we can adapt we can maintain healthy habits we can adopt healthy habits we can have some lifestyle changes and we are obviously supposed to seek some medical resource okay now what are the effects of the hypertension so there occurs left ventricular hypertrophy myocardial infarction is very prone in hypertensive people and there are high chances of atherosclerosis and thrombosis may occur in hypertensive people renal failure and heart failure may also occur in hypertensive people okay now see here 
the brain we can have uh, i mean in phases of stroke or cerebrovascular cerebral accidents okay uh, there might be increased sugar levels okay there might be hypertensive retinopathy because of uh, hypertension in general myocardial infarction yeah heart failure and then kidney chronic renal failure okay all these are the complications are the risk of the uh, hypertension now what is the treatment of hypertension so what is treatment does in hypertension heart failure stroke and renal failure all these things can be avoided by using i mean by undergoing treatment for hypertension so what are the drugs that we use for treatment of hypertension alpha adrenergic receptor blockers beta adrenergic receptor blockers so these thing blocks the action of the adrenaline and noradrenaline yeah and then in the bitters of the angiotensin converting enzyme this decreasing the level of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone and then the calcium channel blockers okay now next is the hypotension so what is hypotension the blood pressure when it is below a normal range it is termed as hypotension okay when systolic blood pressure is less than 90 mm of mercury we term that as hypotension okay now what are the types of hypotension primary hypotension okay it's also known as central hypotension that is it is not due to any underlying disorders but the cause is idiopathic okay the secondary hypotension okay uh, it is due to any underlying disorders like uh, neurogenic shock okay shock usually causes hypotension okay uh, uh, shocks like neurogenic hemorrhagic yeah shocks like that and then uh, hypoactivity hypoactivity of the pituitary gland okay and hypoactivity of the adrenal gland there is a less activity of the pituitary and adrenal gland the next is the postural hypertension as we saw in the earlier slides uh, my change in posture when i sit i mean when i stand from a sitting position here yeah, my blood pressure drops okay drops so that's called the postural hypertension so with this we complete thank you